If you would like a free newsletter on this or other subjects, just give us a call at Christian Answers. The phone number is area code 512-218-8022. That's 512-218-8022. Or you could email us at cdebater at aol.com. That's cdebater at aol.com. Thank you. to our program. I'm Larry Wessels, Director of Christian Answers, and I want to thank you for being with us today. If you've been watching our shows over the past several weeks, you'll know we've been doing a series on a subject that's pertinent to uh, billions of people. The billion or so adherents to the Muslim religion of Islam, and then all the other billions of religions that are familiar with Islam, whether they adhere to it or not. They just know about it. Well, we're discussing that subject and uh, in this particular series, we were trying to answer the question, is believing the Muslim religion uh, something that can lead someone to hell? Can you go to hell, basically, by believing Islamic teachings? We want to answer that question in this series. Joining me in this series is my colleague and friend and brother in Christ, Steve Morrison, our Director of Research. Great to have you here as usual, brother. Well, thank you. It's glad to be here. I almost feel like uh, we should be like co-hosts because we're always here together in, on this particular series. Uh, but uh, Steve's our resident uh, researcher on this subject. He did the, the hard work of reading the Quran, studying the uh, various hadiths of the Islamic religion, and uh, we are now at show number six in this series. We've covered a lot of territory. We've covered the origins of Islam. Uh, we've asked about the Quran, where did it come from, so forth. Uh, comparisons between Christianity and uh, Islam. Various subjects, Jesus and Muhammad, things of that nature. But uh, if you want to know more about that, uh, ask the cable company to show you a rebroadcast of those previous shows, or you can contact our ministry with the phone numbers and addresses we'll be giving you and uh, ask for more information on how you can obtain those programs to get that detailed information. But in this particular episode, show number six, we're going to discuss Islam. Is it a peaceful religion? Is it a religion of peace? We want to answer that question and then tie it in with the overall question for the series. Can believing the Muslim religion send someone to hell? Okay, Steve, we're we're come to this topic here. Where I think uh, you saw a sign at a library or something that right. had to do with this. Go ahead and it, give us a story. It, uh, there was a display in, in a public library in a place where they might display new books or something, and it said Reli Islam, religion of peace, and they had all of this stuff about Islam, and I thought. Well, is that all true, or a little bit true? Or is that just downright the opposite of, of, of the truth? And I thought, well, something like that, if they claim it's a religion of peace, when I, the truth is it is the most violent world religion today, you know, it seems like something like that would kind of demand an answer. Oh, very good. And so in this, this show today, we're going to answer that question about is Islam the most violent religion? And of course, you are mm -hmm. asserting that it is. But we're also, uh, uh, knowing that Muslims are claiming it's a religion of truth, but we want to know where. Where is Muslim is a Muslim religion, Islam, a religion of peace in the mm -hmm. world? Now there's lots of Islamic countries spread throughout the, the globe. Right. And uh, I guess we, we're gonna we're gonna start analyzing that. But first, uh, for our viewers sake, we want to get into a few, because we are coming from a Christian orientation here, mm -hmm. but our show is is basically for both Muslims and non-Christians as well as Christians but we want to look at a biblical perspective here as we go into this topic and we're going to try to find out where is 
Islam, a religion of peace, as we look at the different countries around the world. Before we look at where in the world there might be peace in, in Islam, let's look at some things that the Old Testament says uh, about peace. In Jeremiah 8:11 and part of 12, it says, They dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. Are they ashamed of the loathsome conduct? No, they have no shame at all. They do not even know how to blush. And then it says, So they'll fall among the fallen, and they'll be brought down when they're punished, says the Lord. So that's Jeremiah 8, 11, and 12. So there are people, even in Jeremiah's time, who would say, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. And I think that's kind of what's being said today a little bit. If you look in Revelation 17, uh, verses 5 and 6, uh, this time in the New King James Version, it says, And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Now this is a prophecy of a future time to where there is this false religion called Babylon. And it doesn't say for sure what it is. Uh, some Christians think it might be related to Islam. Some think it might be related to the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, it could be both. It could be something entirely different. We don't really know. Um, but this says, says that there's going to be a false religion that's going to be drunk on the blood of the saints because the, the, uh, they'll have killed so many Christians. Okay, now what kind of things would be related with the Antichrist? 1 John 2, 22 to 23, New King James Version, says, Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. And then in verse 26, These things I've written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. Okay, so what it's saying is that anyone is an antichrist if they deny uh, the, the Son of God. That's right. And, and uh, Muslims, the Islam uh, religion, may not be necessarily the antichrist uh, in Revelation, but there are also lesser antichrists, and it's possible that, you know, maybe Islam is in, in the Bible in a you know, secondary way after all in these verses. Well, because we do know from Islamic teachings that Islam denies that Jesus is the Son of God, mm -hmm. that He died and shed His blood for our sins. It basically changed the whole gospel message from the New Testament and the Messianic prophecies that leading to that uh, gospel message in the Old Testament mm -hmm. uh, to fit their own view. In other words, they simply ignore or disbelieve any older New Testament passages that would contradict what they already believe. Right. So uh, it's basically, a, as I've said before, a religion of unbelief, but because they do not believe Jesus is the Son of God, they fall into this category here, this verse you just mentioned, mm -hmm. the people were looking at on the screen, which comes right out of the New Testament, the Bible itself, and he says, who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? Now they say he's the Messiah, but they go on to say that he is not the Son of God. Right. And of course it says, you know, here that uh, he who denies the Son does not have the Father either. Right. And that uh, this is a doctrine of Antichrist. Yeah. And, uh, they, and they reject the fact that his blood shed on the cross, you know, paid the price for our sins. Exactly. And that he did not come in the flesh. And there's another passage there in John that yeah. says he who denies that he did not come in the flesh as Antichrist. Right. And, and they say Jesus was flesh, but they don't say that God came in the flesh. Right. And that's what John's trying to point out. Mm. Uh, so, uh, basically, from the New Testament perspective, and folks, we're not making this up. This is just something the Bible says. We're just Christians believing what the Bible says. But the Bible was here first. This is for you new viewers that hadn't seen the other shows. And the Bible's telling us that the Antichrist is someone who says that Jesus is not the Son, not the Son of God. Which makes Islam then an Antichrist religion based on what the Scripture is telling us. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, if we have an Antichrist religion, brother, that's denying what the Bible says and doing a lot of things and changing things up wherever it feels like basically as we've discussed in previous programs like i said this is show number six so we've already covered five hours of material uh so hopefully people that are watching can just take our word for it for right now but we've already verified in previous shows uh we have a religion then that claims to be peaceful as we were bringing in the show uh, earlier it claims to be peaceful but 
we're also finding out from some of these key doctrinal things that it's a religion of antichrist, it's a religion of unbelief, because whenever the Bible says something that disagrees with the Quran, well, the Muslim's going to disbelieve the Bible. Yeah. So, but it claims to be peaceful. It claims to bring peace, to have peace. It's a religion of peace, as you were mentioning from that library sign you saw. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the question is, where in the world, and I'm not asking about Carmen San Diego, I'm asking about <laughs> where in the world is Islam peaceful? Now let me just ask you some questions about different countries and you just expound for us uh, the peace of Islam as uh, example in these countries we mentioned. Okay. What about Nigeria? What does Nigeria have to well, say? Well, uh, Nigeria has, has had uh, persecution of Christians by Muslims. Muslims are primarily in the northern part. Some of the Christians have armed themselves and defended themselves. But as a specific example, in 1987, uh, churches were set on fire in the Kaduna and Kafanchan uh, province areas, and Muslims killed hundreds of Christians. It's in 1987? Right. Now, you know, a lot of Muslims, that would be could be watching right now would say, ah, he's got no evidence of that. He's just making it up. Yeah, what, what it was, this is documented in, in human rights abuses. Uh, you could, uh, Amnesty International has some things, and there are also uh, uh, other evidences um, that you have. One Christian thing is called Reach Out, talking about Islam and human rights. And there are some things in here that, that, that just document specifics. Uh, it's not generalities, but specifics about Muslims in the name of their religion are basically making Islam drunk on the blood of the saints. And you know, I can watch TV almost any night, and all the trouble in the Middle East and things of this nature. So I, our viewers are well aware that there's been a lot of trouble and problems and fatalities out there over their lifetimes. You can just catch that on the news here or there. So things are going on. And all I'm saying is you can disbelieve what uh, Steve's showing you here with this document or others, but you know in the back of your mind things are happening out there. And whether you want to specifically believe something or, oh, they just made up, you know things are happening. And so I'm trying to say when he gives you these, these stats and things, you can disbelieve it, but that doesn't make what he's saying not true. Mm -hmm. So you've got stats, evidences. Uh, things and there's always going to be someone that just going to turn a blind eye and not look at the evidence, yeah. much like a lot of Muslims do with the Bible. They just don't want to believe things that the Bible says, so they just turn a blind eye and ignore the evidence. So I understand there's going to be people like that, but we're saying the things you're you're, you're saying are documented, can be believed, mm. and I'm just saying just from watching the news, you can tell things are happening out there where people are getting killed, and it's religion oriented. Okay, uh, tell me about Algeria, brother. Well, in Algeria, just just an example. I had a, a friend who was a Christian, uh, and we were in Houston, and he was talking to some Algerian students, and he was saying that, um, well, why don't y'all become Christians? Because I know someone else from Algeria who did. And the Algerian said, yeah, who? And my friend didn't know much about Islam, but he was smart enough not to say the name. But he asked them why they asked. And they said, well, in our country, we kill people uh, who convert from Islam. So that was okay. just uh, in a personal conversation. Then. Right. Right here in your own experience. What, what, about, what about in the Sudan? Now, I've seen a lot of news articles about this, and even in the, on television and in major publications. But go ahead. And All right. Well, in, well in, in the Sudan, they're trying to implement uh, Islamic Sharia or, 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 or Sharia, or Islamic law. And they're basically not only, uh, there's almost like a civil war going on in which the combination of Christians and animists in, in, in the south are being, whole villages are being slaughtered uh, by Muslim fighters. And often they're killing the men, and often they're taking the women and the children from the Dinka tribe and other tribes, and they're selling them into slavery. Why are they picking on the Dinkas? What, what's uh, the deal about the Dinkas? Because they're, they're not Muslim. The Dinkas are not Muslim. What right. what predominantly are they? Just animists? Uh, pri uh, primarily Christian, but the, you have a lot of uh, animists in southern Sudan. Okay, also. so non-Muslims are being persecuted right, 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 in the Sudan. Right, and and, and and you can even you know you can buy slaves, uh, black slaves in the Sudan, and I understand even some of them are taken to Libya. And this is actually documented in the London Economist um, in the 1992 May 4th edition, special edition of Newsweek on slavery. Uh, it is slavery today. Uh, also, the Austin American Statesman. 
1996 and the Reader's Digest in 1996, uh, they all talk about slavery is going on today and it's only going on within Islam and, and, and it's uh, from uh, Christians and, and um, other non-Muslims in the Sudan. Well, well I've often heard from uh, some of our black Muslim friends who don't qualify as Orthodox Muslims right. by any uh, stretch of the imagination, but I've seen a lot of arguments coming from that group and others that say, well, Christianity is a white man's religion and Islam is a black man's religion things of that nature mm -hmm. but now when you talk about the, uh, the Muslims and killing and enslaving people there in uh, in the Sudan enslaving they're, blacks, they're enslaving yeah. white people right they're no, not enslaving no. black people no they're enslaving just black people they're enslaving j black people this okay. is Muslims enslaving black people yeah the people in southern Sudan are all black but at least Muhammad was black uh, in Islam right no, no. Uh, only black Muslims say that, but but the Hadith record, you know, that he was a white person, his armpits were, were uh, and, and we covered that in previous shows. So Muhammad was white. He started the Muslim religion, so it's a white man's religion in a sense, and it's blacks who are still being enslaved to this day. Right. The, in the, the Sudan, the, the, there's only one slaveholder religion uh, that I know of in the world today, and that is Islam. Islam, and then Muhammad himself ordained and and uh, and. and and recommended, I guess, slavery. I mean, it was part he, of his. He had slaves. He sold. He he, uh, he sold slaves. A uh, slave was about to be freed, and the owner needed uh, to make money for debts. And the owner promised he wouldn't sell them. And so Muhammad took them and sold them for him. So so Muhammad was definitely a slave owner and believed in slavery. Mm -hmm. And they still practice it to this day in the Sudan. Right. And it's all because of the religion. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the religion of unbelief. It's the religion of Islam, which kind of goes by whatever Muhammad says but forgets the things that Jesus says in the New Testament. But anyway, uh, let's go on to some other countries. What about Egypt? Well, well, before we leave Sudan, oh, you want kind, of, kind of an interesting thing is that uh, mosques are actually being bombed in the Sudan. Uh, uh, and they're not being bombed by Christians in retaliation. They're, they're being bombed by other Muslims. And so you have fanatical Muslims who are actually bombing the mosque, sometimes with people inside, of, of other Muslim sects. So the and, Muslim sects are actually killing each other. Yeah. yeah so, so it's not only violence against Christians and, 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 and pagans. It's also violence against fellow Muslims. So the Muslims are declaring jihads against each other. Practically, yes. <laughs> and uh, so they're just wholesale killing everyone around and I guess this can be uh, traced right back to Islamic teachings. Wait, 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 I well, I, I assume they would believe that the other Muslims wouldn't be true Muslims because they don't share their fanaticism or whatever. Right. So, so they're killing there. But 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 this this idea of killing and slavery comes from the Muslim religion. Very natural for them, yes. Right, so this is just uh, just a, just a natural phenomenon and a logical consequence mm. of that particular religion of Islam. Right. Now we're still trying to find the peace involved. Mm. I guess, well, I was going to say, I guess there's peace when after you kill everybody, everybody's yeah, dead, like so there's lots of peace. Peace of the tombstone, yeah. <laughs> yeah but uh, anyway, what about Egypt? What's going but, on there? Well, speaking of Muslims killing Muslims, there was a Muslim doctor who was stabbed by a, a, a Muslim fundamentalist. And he was stabbed because there was a, a Christian cop who was stabbed, and the Muslim doctor treated the Christian. And so the, and so the other Muslims stabbed him for that. And there are many cases of, of, uh, of cops, and, and large groups of cops are being attacked by Muslim fundamentalists. And there's a curious phenomenon of bakery fires, where apparently sparks of bakeries seem to escape and burn down Christian churches. They never seem to burn down mosques, just Christian churches. Mm -hmm. you know, and there is a lot of persecution of the cops who make up, I've heard, roughly 10% of the population of, of, of Egypt today uh, by Muslims. You know, so in the Bukhari Hadith uh, and you know, in the Quran, they talk about, well, Muslims who live under Islamic law, if they pay the taxes and stuff, then they're basically left alone. No, they're not, at least not in Egypt. And in fact, uh, some of the news items I've seen uh, have also reported that there's uh, Islamic fundamentalists and extremists. Of course, they seem to be in all throughout all different countries and things. Yeah, but Sunni and but uh, they've yeah. been attacking some of the tourist trade in Egypt, trying to get some Muslim Islamic laws put in place that they want. Mm. Uh, and so they're trying to put pressure on the government to acquiesce to these demands by you know uh, blowing up tourists and, and mm. you know causing fear and terror, so mm. that the, the government will acquiesce to their demands. So I've heard, I've seen that on some of the news. What about in Iran? 
Okay, well, in, in, Iran, in, in Iran for 1990, for example, there was an Iranian Christian pastor, Reverend Hussein Sudmond, who was taken from his prison cell and executed because 21 years earlier he had converted from Islam to Christianity. Uh, besides Christians, Baha'is and Sufis and Zoroastrians are also killed by government authorities. Now, there's kind of a struggle going on right now between the hardline uh, Muslims and the more moderate Muslims, but whichever side wins, there, there's no indication that this is going to let up this persecution of, of other people. And I guess it started with the revolt against uh, the Shah of Iran back then. You right. got Ayatollah Khomeini came along, yeah. and then all this type of stuff started yeah. happening. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I'm not going to even attempt to justify everything that the Shah did. Uh, but talking to you know some Iranians, it's like, well, they saw injustice there, and they wanted a change, and they got a change. And after they got the change, they thought, well, maybe the injustice of the Shah was better than we had now. <laughs> right. Yeah, and and, and 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 some of these details, but by the way, are, are coming from this issue. Reach out to the Muslim world. Uh, there are various articles, and I would highly recommend uh, 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 you getting it. Uh, you can get it from uh, 1202 Folsom Street, uh, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. Uh, but but it, it's really an, an excellent thing talking and about. If anyone uh, failed to get that, they can contact our ministry at the end of the show or something and leave their name and phone number or address, actually, and then we'll mail you information and their address so you can contact them as well. Right. All right. Uh, what about uh, Afghanistan? Well, in Afghanistan, uh, it, they're trying to impose uh, uh, Sharia Islamic law, and, and and women can't go outside the homes without veils, and they aren't supposed to work at jobs, and they have to have if they go anywhere, they're supposed to have a male member of the family present. But this, the Taliban, which is Sunni Muslims, they massacred around 3,000 Shiite Hazaris in Afghanistan. Now it's not clear that they massacred them necessarily because they were Shiite, because this was probably in revenge. Because earlier, you know, during all the fighting, the Hazaris massacred about 2,000 Taliban fighters earlier. So it's like one Muslim group massacres another, so they got to get revenge. And so it's a whole kind of cycle of, 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 of hatred and revenge. And you say, is this true religion from God? I certainly don't think so. Right, and we discussed this in an earlier program, how the Hadiths actually uh, verify you can have revenge mm -hmm, and right. do these things. So actually it's, it's verified by the Islamic teachings themselves mm -hmm. and so this violence is, uh, is precipitated almost from the religion that they believe in right okay what about uh, uh, how do you say that uh, T Tajikistan <laughs> uh, in, well in the central uh, I've never uh, even heard of that place in, in Asian republics it's kind of uh, close to China, I guess, north of Afghanistan. There's also been a civil war there. Uh, they had Muslims uh, 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 fighting Muslims, and um, uh, uh, again, it's like, you know, are 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 they, you know, can this be the religion of God when, uh, uh, when they do that? Now, them fighting doesn't mean that. Actually, this does not prove all Islam is wrong, but it proves that whatever they're practicing isn't right. What about Pakistan? Well, in, 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 in Pakistan, you often think about it as a little bit more peaceful. They don't have great civil wars or anything. But to give an example, there was a teenage girl who was executed uh, for converting from Islam to Christianity. And there are also small small Muslim sects, such as the Ahmadiyya and also Aga Khani, that, well, especially the Ahmadiyya, that are by law persecuted you know, in, 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 in Pakistan. And I, I think I saw a news item last year where they're starting to enforce stricter Islamic laws mm -hmm. through the government. So uh, that's something I, I caught on the news, but I don't know, since then I haven't seen too much. But uh, I'm sure it, as Islam takes hold of a country and the uh, Muslims get more and more in power, you might say, that the Islamic teachings can start to kind of grip hold of the society mm -hmm. or the culture that they're, they're in control of in a stronger way as time goes by. Right. Uh, I think that's what's happening in Pakistan. Okay, uh, in the Quran. Well, in, 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 in the Quran, what it says about uh, Islam, the religion of peace, uh, this is in Surah 914, it says, Kill them, and Allah will torment them by your hands. He will humiliate them and give you victory over them. And then uh, it also says, Fight those who believe not, dot, 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 even if they be people of the book, that is, Christians and Jews, until they have willing agreed to pay the Jews a tribute in recognition of their submissive state. That's from Surah 9, uh, verse 29. That's right out of the Quran. Right, itself. So, so much for peace in, 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 in Islam. And so there you got to kill them, 
and Allah will torment them by your hands. He will humiliate them and give you victory over them. Yeah. And, Fight those that believe not. Right. Now, now, now something I should add is that I've met a number of, of Muslims, uh, especially in, in America, and I think that they're not just saying that Islam is a religion of peace. I think they genuinely believe Islam is a religion of peace. Probably because they haven't read I wonder if they've read how much of the Quran and, and Hadith that they've read. Well, what I've said before on other programs here is uh, a lot of your Muslims, just like a lot of Christians, mm. are very nominal. They haven't they studied. Don't really know. Yeah, they're, they're ignorant of their own professed religion. They haven't really studied that much. They, you know, they, they take it, they're probably more secular than they are religious, and they just kind of, you know, do a few things to make them feel like, well, if they die, they'll, they'll have a, a fire insurance policy. You know, mm -hmm. that's the way a lot of Christians are. They don't really know what the Bible says. They've heard some sermons here or there, pick up a TV evangelist here or there, believe what they feel like believing and ignoring the rest and, and figure, well, God loves everybody, so it doesn't matter how I live or what I do. I'll be okay in the end. Well, I think uh, a lot of Muslims are exactly like that, and they uh, simply don't know a lot of this, this stuff. I think particularly... A lot of them that have been born here that were raised in Muslim families, maybe they're mm -hmm. more secularized and affected by, you know, a culture that's not overly Islamic. Yeah. Well, well most of them, I think, are aware that some atrocities are going on, but they think it perhaps is by a small number of Muslim extremists. Well, if this small percentage is greater than 50%, it's not a small percentage anymore. Then the next question to ask is like, well, if Muhammad were alive today, would he be like the more liberal Muslim or would he be like the more extremist Muslim? And I believe that, that if you read what Muhammad did in the Hadith and, and what was said in the Quran, that he would tend to the more, more extremist side. Right, because he, after all, he's the one that wrote all this stuff. Right. Well, he didn't write it, but somebody else... Yeah, he didn't write it down. But, yes, we but covered it another thing. He apparently in his seizures when he was per sweating profusely and mm -hmm. and all those things you know, with a red face and everything he was saying these things so someone else wrote it down on bone or palm leaves or whatever and, mm -hmm. and they came up with this okay what about in Iraq well in Iraq from what I've seen and researched so far it doesn't seem that Christians have persecution any more than any other groups I mean, the Shiite Muslims get persecuted in southern Iran. They have even gas curves uh, in, in, in northern Iran. And so, yeah, it may not be good for the Christians in Iraq, but it, right now it's not good for anybody in Iraq. And so I have to say that, you know, Iraq, if you think of it as a place of peace, it, it, it is probably where religion is most like a religion of peace. So just a lot of violence all the way around. Yeah, and but, but, but nothing necessarily in, you know, in, 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 in aimed at Christians. Right. But, I mean, they just get, they get the axe just like all the other groups that the government <laughs> doesn't like right. in that sense. Okay, uh, what can we say in conclusion to all this? Well, Islam is the most warlike and violent major world religion today. And I guess they try to say religion, Islam is a religion of peace. I don't know, out of shame or to cover it up or because they're just generally deceived. Well, uh, we... Uh, <laughs> Uh, we, we can tell from the uh, writings of the Quran, the Hadith, I mean, military expeditions, warlike attitudes, jihads mm -hmm. are everywhere to be found. Right. And so what we see in the world when we look at all the violence and things in these Islamic countries, it only makes sense. Yeah, and, and you know what that reminds me of is that, you know, in prior generations, another group that said all they really wanted was peace uh, were the communists. You know, now, now one Russian uh, USSR leader once said that, well, to have peace with America, perhaps a third of the Americans would have to be killed. And I guess that's a form of peace, kind of a silent peace. <laughs> like I peace. said before, yeah, when you kill everybody, but, there's but, plenty but, of peace. But, Everybody's but, dead. So if some group says, you know, that they're just for peace, it's like, well, you know, you've got to look behind that a little bit. Right. Okay, now, uh, and we've talked about this before. Uh, do Christians worship the same God as Allah? Okay. What, well, what, what, well, Let's see, not from a Bible perspective or what Christians say, but let's see what Muslims do. Okay, mm -hmm. in Egypt, Muslim uh, extremists burned three churches in September of 1991. I mean, they burned probably lots and lots of churches, but here are three, here's a specific example. And they beat a number of people, six in critical condition. And they chanted, there is no God but Allah. And Coptics, and Copts, meaning Coptic Christians, are enemies of Allah. Okay, so if... Muslims really believe that Christians worship the same God and they burn the places to where God is worshipped and they kill the people who are worshipping God, then why do they think that they're the same God? 
And I have, I have to conclude that at least these Muslims didn't think that they were worshiping the, the same God, especially when they said the cops were enemies of God. Mm -hmm. So Muslims, especially moderate Muslims, will say one thing to non-Muslims and uh, while they're trying to you know influence them, and then they will say another thing to, to non-Muslims when they're trying to kill them. I heard that. Now, you've got some information here on Iran. All right, well, Khomeini uh, articulated his views before his death. He said, any man or woman who denies the existence of God or believes in his partners, thus as a trinity, uh, or else does not believe in his prophet Muhammad is impure in the same way as our excrement, urine, dog, and wine. And Khomeini said other things too, but not all of them were so printable here. So we just went with this one. <laughs> and this is from Sangs of the Ayatollah Khomeini, page 51. And this is again quoted from uh, Reach Out to the Muslim World uh, in April 1992, page 21. I remember seeing some documentation. Uh, this is back when Khomeini was still alive and I was a student at the university in, 19, uh, in the 1970s. But I saw some documented evidence that uh, he, he was also advocating, and, and, and of course he's a Shiite. Right. And so th they're not like a Sunni, but uh, anyway, he was also advocating uh, uh, sex with different animals and saying things like, well, it's better to have it with this animal than that animal. And mm, that stuck with that. me, that stuck with me for all these years uh, because it was a document in a national magazine. And we were looking at it and said, is this for real? This was saying, now we're not saying sh actual Muslims were saying, it. we're talking about Ayatollah Khomeini. Okay. was teaching this. This was from his sayings and his teachings. And uh, that just, that just, of course, I, back then I didn't know anything about religion. I, mm -hmm. I was just a secular guy going to college, you know. But anyway, that freaked me out because they had it all documented where he said, you know, you know we were running around the dorm showing, look what Khomeini says, huh. you know, and it was, it was pretty wild. So Yeah, because I'm not aware of any other Shiites, you know, you know, you know saying that. So, I mean, Khomeini... Yeah, now this, I'm, I'm not saying other Muslims or Shiites are saying this. I'm just saying this is something I saw as a student at the University of Texas in a, in a national magazine back then mm -hmm. that was simply documenting some of the things Khomeini himself had mm -hmm. said. Okay. So, anyway, uh, after what you just read here, I can, I can believe you could say that too. <laughs> so anyway, uh, what about in Malaysia? Okay, well in Malaysia, uh, they do not have violent persecution of, of, of Christians. They, on one hand, sort of follow uh, the Islamic law a little closer there. Uh, but on the other hand, the, the government did destroy a new Christian church. It's like, well, you're, if you're not allowing the, the Christians to worship, that's persecution. Uh, and and, and other, otherwise, they have a law saying you can't have any literature that says that the God of Christianity and the God of Islam are the same. So at least to Malaysian uh, Muslims, and those are Sunni Muslims, uh, you can't, you know, they don't believe them as the same. Uh, I know they're Sunni because in Malaysia, I know they passed a law outlawing Shiite Islam. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, so, you know, Muslims themselves say one thing about, you know, they're enemies of Allah and the Christian enemies of Allah and, and, and Christians don't worship the same God, but then they say something different when they try to talk to Christians. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've got a chart coming up here, brother. It says, three clues to figure out if Muslims and Christians worship the same God. All right, well, to kind of recap the things we've gone through before, when Muslims kill Christians because of their worship and beliefs, that's a sign that maybe Muslims don't think that it's the same God. When Muslims just destroy houses of Christian worship that allegedly provide worship with the same God, that's a sign that Muslims don't think Christians are worshiping the same God. And then when Muslims, Christians in Malaysia can only purchase Bibles through specialized Christian centers and only Bibles that do not use the word Allah as the word for God, that's a sign that at least in Malaysia they see that they don't worship the same God. That's right. So at least there's some who understand that it's like we've already discussed. We're, we're talking about the God of Islam, Allah, mm -hmm. and we're talking about the God of Christianity. We're talking about two completely different gods. Right. And somebody's an idolater. <laughs> At least one has to be wrong. The, 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 the real Orthodox Muslims already believe the Christians are idolaters mm -hmm. because they know the Christians, the real ones, believe that Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. Right. And of course, they think that's idolatry. And of course, the Christians realize that, well, since the, the, the Bible is true and, uh, and Jesus is God Almighty, second person of the Trinity, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the one true God, that necessarily makes the God of Islam a false God. 
and a fake God, a God that doesn't really exist because he's not the same God as the true God. A God whose followers kill Christians. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, and even even in Muslim countries, this is recognized, particularly in Malaysia, mm -hmm. where they don't allow, allow them to use the word Allah for the name right. of God in their Bibles. Okay, now let's go to a, 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 people at home can see it on the charts. This is something the Muslims bring up all the time, mm -hmm. and uh, it's the Crusades. And as you have here, quote, Christian, unquote, jihads. Okay. So uh, tell me a little bit about this, brother. Well, I hope Muslims have all heard this part before, but if they haven't, let me say it to them straight. Okay, the Crusades uh, were a, a very evil thing uh, that Christians did or people claiming to be Christian, uh, they learned that from the Muslims. The Muslims had their jihads, and so Christians basically had their own jihad called the Crusades. Okay, having Christian Crusades, Jesus did not teach that. That is not in the Bible, but it, but it, it was a predominantly evil thing that Christians did. Once through the Seljuks and everybody, they, they were denied access to Jerusalem and the Holy Land, they decided to take action. And sometimes they were very brutal about it, and that was a very evil thing. Okay, um, we will we, we, we will go through a, just a little bit of the Chris, of the history of, of, of the Crusades, and we'll just kind of see what we can learn from that. All right, they started in 1096 to 1099. Uh, prior to this time, or prior to, to uh, like up to the 900s, there were a lot of pagan Vikings who were terrorizing uh, all of Northern Europe. And Christians uh, uh, con eventually converted the Vikings to Christianity. And what happened to the Vikings then? Many of them became Normans. And they invaded England and, and, and um, northwest France. And many of the Crusaders were actually the Normans. There were also others who were French and, and German and, and, a, and a few English. But um, so this is, these are people who weren't Christians for, for very long, at least historically. And, 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 and they went down and said, well, we're going to fight like we've always fought, uh, sort of like you know, doing things for God, taking the sword in your own hands, and, and Jesus did not talk about that. Okay, uh, going on down, uh, uh, 1120 isn't a part of the Crusades proper, but it's it's uh, significant to the Crusades. In 1120, the Turks and Ismaili Muslims, Ismaili are a type of Shiite Muslim, they defeated 25,000 Nusaris, and Nusaris uh, were basically the Alawites. And if you ever wonder, how could the Christians control the Holy Land so long in the, in the face of a hostile Muslim population? Well, the answer was the Muslim population wasn't necessarily hostile because in Lebanon and in Syria, many of the Muslims were, were, were Nisaris or Alawites, and they were actually allied with the Crusaders, and they fought the other Muslims together. And so they're actually, you, know, you think of how bad the Crusaders were, and they were bad in, 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 in a lot of areas, but they actually did have peaceful relations with these Muslims. Mm-hmm. Because the other Muslims were killing these Muslims. <laughs> I got you. All right. So, 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 uh, so just a couple of things going through the Crusades, and the Crusades were bad. Uh, in some cases, the, 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 the Crusades were uh, very, very foolish. In 1212, uh, you had the Children's Crusade, sometimes called the Fifth Crusade, where they thought that little kids, because they were pure, if you gave them swords by their childish purity, um, they, uh, they would uh, you know, recapture Jerusalem and everything else. And so they think upwards of almost maybe 100,000 kids were sent off here, and many of them were lost at sea and shipwrecks or some of them landed and the Muslims enslaved them and, 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 and you know, they just became slaves and it was a very foolish thing that, um, that the Bible never commanded and Jesus never wanted. Okay. Um, the, the, uh, the Crusades weren't only against Muslim lands. In 1229-1230, the Teutonic Knights started a crusade against the pagan Slavs uh, in Poland, Lithuania, you know, parts of Western Russia. Okay, and at, at Novgorod, the Russians uh, defeated uh, Sw the Swedish invaders. So that, the Russians were Christians and the Swedes were Christians and they were still fighting, so they were fighting each other. So it's like you had too many Swedes and too many Russians, but they weren't really following Christ when they fought like that. And the Spanish recaptured Spain from the Moors. That was a bloody battle on both sides. And so there was a lot of heavy fighting uh, 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 between them. And I'm not here to defend that. Uh, I, I, I will talk about it, but I will tell you up front that, that that is something that was shameful and was bad for people calling themselves Christians to do. Right. In fact, uh, we got this next chart, which is unchristlike aspects of the Crusades. And as our viewers are looking at that, I just wanted to read 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. 
to back up what Steve's saying here about how these guys are not doing what the Bible says to do. No. And uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself, itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So what we have here is the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, you don't use the swords and the, and the shields and the, and the catapults and all that earthly stuff that we see in the battles. Mm -hmm. But uh, as he says here, you, you do it through God to the pulling down of imaginations by the Word of God, anything exalts itself against God, preaching the gospel, uh, doing the things the Bible talks about, you know, to every man an answer for the hope that lies within you, mm -hmm. and meekness and fear, right. uh, all those witnessing tips that the Paul and the apostles give you, which he, he says uh, the uh, man of God should be patient, kind, gentle, long-suffering, if perhaps God will grant them repentance to acknowledging of the truth, that they may escape themselves of the snare of the devil, who have been held captive by him to do his will. Okay. So you have all these scriptures, Colossians chapter 4, so forth, on how we should witness and, and reach people for Christ. Not pulling out a gun and putting a gun to someone's head and say, believe in Christ or die. Mm -hmm. Or pulling out a sword and whacking off somebody's head. That's not it's, Christian. It's not, that's not what the Bible says to do throughout the scripture. You're to go out and preach the gospel. You're going to suffer persecution. Father will turn against son. Son will turn against father, you know, the, those in your own household, will turn, but you'll, you'll suffer a lot of bad things, but you're going to do it by preaching the gospel, by, mm. you know, giving those things that are supposed to be proclaimed in truth through, because God has ordained through the foolishness of preaching that he'll bring in his elect. So it's not by guns, artillery, war, uh, you know, booby traps or whatever else you want to use to kill someone. It's, it's through the word of God. That's how you do it, a Christian through the biblical way. Now, Steve, look at this chart. Unlike Christ aspects of the Crusades, uh, re go through some of this real quick. Okay. For what, what, uh, well, some of the things, for example, the Crusaders sacked Constantinople, uh, which was a, a, the Crusaders primarily, you might say, were Catholic, and the, and the Constantinople was Greek Orthodox for unpaid debts. You know, that didn't seem too Christ-like. Uh, the other thing about the Crusades, uh, well, after the time in 1487, uh, the Pope declared a crusade against the Waldenses. Now, the Waldenses were a Christian group that had many similarities to the Protestants today, except that the Waldenses started about 1000 AD. And these were peace-loving people who lived in the mountains of northern Italy and, and Spain and France, and, and they didn't bother anybody. And But because they didn't accept all of the stuff that the Catholic Church taught, the Catholic Church needed a crusade against them just like they had against the Muslims. So if we had lived back then, we wouldn't be part of the Crusaders. We would be a part of the people being killed by the Crusaders. That's right. I uh, I still think. Uh, well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say in case anyone in our viewing audience gets any ideas. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 but 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 I will say that after seeing all these things that that Muslims have done, you know, uh, and are doing today. Uh, you know, perhaps someone has the idea, well, maybe you sh we should get them back. Maybe we should get revenge or, or, or do something else. But if you did that, that's nothing at all, that, that, that's contrary to Christ, and that makes you just as bad as them. Exactly, and, and so the scripture says, uh, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to go and get revenge on anyone. The Lord says, he'll do it. Right. He'll take care of that. You just do what I've told you to do. You go out and preach the gospel. You live for my son, the Lord Jesus Christ. You do those things that you're told to do in God's eternal and mighty word, but God will take care of the vengeance and all that kind of stuff himself. Right, but the scary thing is in the last judgment, God will take care of the vengeance more thoroughly than any human ever could. That's right, that's right. So, okay. you know, we as Christians don't have to worry about having a jihad to cut someone's head off. Because biblically, we're not supposed to be doing that anyway. We're right. supposed to be following Christ and doing all those things we mentioned before. Right. Now, uh, uh, we've got... Here, jihads, as people see at home on, a, on the next uh, screen graphic, 
Muslim Crusades. All right, so th so these are considered the, the flip side of the Christian Crusades, and I would say these were just as evil. Okay. Oh, no, this is the whole point of it. Now, you at home are look seeing this, and Steve's going to give you a run through of this, but we just said the Christian Crusades were wrong, they're unbiblical, they're condemned by God's Word, and equally, whatever the Muslims are doing is just as bad as you were saying. Right. And that's the big point. But go right. ahead. All right. In 632 to 644 was sort of the second phase of the Muslim conquest with Syria, Persia, Egypt, uh, Cyrene, which is kind of the northeastern part of Libya. Then it kind of went straight from there into Armenia, Anatolia, which is modern-day Turkey, Cyprus, the rest of Libya. And then it kind of spread out to the Khazars, um, who were uh, actually a Turkish people that embraced Judaism in kind of southern Russia and Spain. Then they went through Afghanistan and even up to parts of Italy. And then the, Fa the Fatimids overran other Muslims to conquer Egypt. And then it gets kind of interesting. Around 1000 AD, Mahmud of Ghazni, which is in Afghanistan, he raided India and he killed many people. And the Seljuk Turks, they conquered much of the Muslim world in 1039. Now Tamerlane was a Muslim conqueror who fought more Muslims than non-Muslims. And he was extremely bloody. He would do things like when he captured a king, he would like rape their daughters before their eyes. And, and he would cut off people's heads and hands and everything else. And also uh, concurrent with him was the Ottoman Empire which started and, and, and then the Turks overran the Balkans and they did something which is not in the Quran and that they required the firstborn son of every family to join them uh, and, 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 and to become a, uh, a soldier called a Janissary and they actually did the fighting for the Turks so they separated families uh, just Christian families to do that and the Turks uh, they uh, defeated the Balkan forces at uh, Kosovo in 1448 and of course we've heard of Kosovo since then and then finally in 1453 an estimated 100,000 uh, Turks finally conquered Constantinople which Muslims had been trying to do for almost maybe seven eight hundred years and they finally did okay with that let's go to distinctives the Muslim holy wars. All right, well, way back in 732, uh, Abd ar-Rahman sacked a monastery, and that was not, that was just an example. That was not uncommon to sack Christian churches and monasteries, steal the, or rob the stuff and kill the people. Uh, Muslims in Africa, they raised, uh, that is destroyed Ghana's capital. And Ghazni, uh, 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 I'm sorry, the, the Muslim Mahmud of Ghazni, uh, he sacked Somnath in India and killed 50,000 people, you know, mainly Hindus there. And of course the Hindus, they had less protection than the Jews and Christians from Muslims, so he just killed them all. Uh, Saladin, he recaptured uh, Cairo from the Fatimids, so Saladin was famous for fighting crusaders, but he fought the Fatimids also. And then Mahmud of Ghazni in 1175 fought again in India, and then they fought in central India. And in 1260, the, Ma the Mamluks of Egypt, they persecuted the Nisaris, which is the Alawites. And the Mamluks in the 1300s, they conquered the Christian Makara Kingdom, which is in the modern-day Sudan. Okay, so a lot of bloodshed and violence going on here. Seems like it, bloodshed and violence in, in, in the Mideast is, is just kind of the, the norm. See, now, let me point this out uh, so the viewers don't miss this. Now, we already stated when well, you've got these crusades and, you know, and then I, whenever I'm dealing with Muslims and we bring up some of these things about the jihads and how that, that's really unbiblical, it's not the Christian thing to do, then they go and they mention the crusades and then they, the Muslims will mention the Old Testament, excuse me, with the Joshua destroying these cities and mm -hmm. all this kinds of stuff, uh, killing every last man, woman, and child. Uh, I've got a main point I want to bring, but I want you to address this real quick. Yeah, how do you how do you deal with uh, the Muslim argument? Well, look at Joshua killing every last man, woman, and child in these cities okay. by the command of God. How, how would you argue with that? All right. What, what, well, first of all, a couple things you got to understand. Uh, things were different under the Old Testament theocracy, under the direct rule of God, and in that time, God did command Joshua to do that. If you look at the Canaanite religion, it was especially horrible. Uh, it had infant sacrifice. We have archaeological evidence to prove that in addition to the Bible. They had ritual prostitution. Now, it wasn't just the prostitution is bad, but if you wanted to be a religious person, if you wanted to become closer to God, then the Canaanite religious said that you had to be with a prostitute and you had to kill your son or daughter. Mm -hmm. And that's especially horrible. And so that was so bad that God did command them at that time to, to, uh, to wipe them out. Now, since that time, the New Testament is different. Christ never said to fight anybody. Now, all this can be seen in your chart, wars in the Old Testament. 
Uh, right. And, 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 and in fact, uh, Christ said, you know, it, you know, you've heard it said, love your neighbors and hate your enemies. And Christ said, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So, um, so we have a different and higher standard under Christ. And we have a higher standard today. Unfortunately, Muslims disagree with that. They want to go. They, they want to. They, they want to, to to stay with the Old Testament and totally reject uh, the places where Christ has superseded it. Okay. Now, with that, you know, people can see that chart. But now, I want to get back to the main point of what's so important about looking at these Muslim distinctives, the holy wars, the jihads. We already said the Crusades were wrong. They shouldn't have done those things. And look here, the Muslims are doing it also. But now, can you see a major parallel here? The parallel I want to draw your attention to is the fact that the Christians are doing all these violent and terrible things in the Crusades and so forth. And they're called Christians, but they're not doing what God says. They are not doing what the Bible clearly commands to be done. And then the Christians get the bad rap for it because these people are going by the title Christians. But it's not what the Bible says to do. Right. Now... You have the Muslims going around killing and raping or whatever it is that they're doing, conquering. And we see the parallel that that's not what the Bible says to do. That's not what the... But it is what the, the Quran says to do. Right. And the Hadith and things. What we're, what we're trying to tell you is, and the parallel we're trying to show is, here's these crusaders doing things that are not Christian. They call themselves Christian, but they're doing something that's not Christian. And we already said that the Islamic religion is different than the Christian religion. The two different gods, two different Jesuses, two different religions. But it's interesting in the Christian concept, what these crusaders are doing is not Christian. It's sinful, it's evil, it's wicked. But in Islam, those same things are okay. Right. And so what, we're, what the, the parallel I want to draw is Islam actually is fulfilling what would be a pattern or a distinctive of a wicked and false religion mm -hmm. because it would fall under that category by the Christian biblical standard. Right. And this is a distinctive that's very clear. Now with that said, let's look at this chart briefly as we're running low on time. This other chart on more jihad distinctives. Okay, this is where it's even more yeah. ugly. In 1320, the Muslims destroyed 16 Coptic, 60 Coptic churches. So much for rights for Christians under that. Uh, uh, Tamerlane uh, had a, a hill of 70,000 skulls in Isfahan, Iran. Now, the interesting thing about this is that these Iranians were Muslims. And because they rebelled, Tamerlane killed 70,000 Muslims. Then he invaded India because he uh, fought the Muslim sultans there because he said the Muslim sultans were too tolerant of their Hindu subjects. And he um, killed many Indians there. And then after he did all that, he built a great mosque in Samarkand in Central Asia. And then after that, he sacked Baghdad. You know, Muslims would be upset if Crusaders killed, let's say, 20,000 people in Baghdad. But Tamerlane, a fellow Muslim, did the same thing after building a mosque. And he killed 20,000 Muslims. Right. In Baghdad. And, well, pri primarily Muslims, yes. Maybe a few percent Christians. But, but, but anyway, so the point is, here is this, quote, great conqueror. And he was a horrible man bound for hell. And people can argue, well, were the Crusaders uh, worse and more wicked, or were the people who did the, the Muhammad uh, jihads more wicked? And you can argue that all day, but the point is it doesn't matter. They were all wicked. <laughs> they were all uh, they, wicked it, and it, condemned it, by it, God's word. If words. they all live by violence, they're all going to hell. And it's like, forget the Christianity, the Crusaders, forget Islam, and look at Jesus and look at God in the Bible. That's right. Now, let's go to a, a summary here. A summary of all this, brother, you can run down the chart of people okay. looking at at home. All right. Muslim... Is, uh, Islam, I'm sorry, is the most violent religion in the world today, despite them saying they're a religion of peace. Okay, Historically, they've been a violent religion. They're consistent on that. Warfare was the primary reason Islam became a major religion. Christianity in its early days was the second fastest growing religion of any major religion. Islam was the first, and that's because Islam spread by the sword. Okay, Cruel and warlike people are either bad Christians or, more likely, not Christians at all. But cruel people are, are revered by many Muslims. So the summary, uh, I think, hits like a brick mm -hmm. as, as people at home are looking at this, you know. It's the most violent religion today. Right. And as we look down through history, it almost seems like it's been a violent religion that would rank up there with any other violent religion yeah, the, the down through time. The Aztecs might have them beat, but not too many others would have them beat. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so what we've seen here in this, this particular uh, segment of our series on Islam is... Uh, 
Islam is very violent. It, it, it fits the pattern of something wicked and evil that the Bible would describe. And that's another reason why you have laws like in Malaysia mm. that say, well, you can't even put the word Allah in your Bibles for your because they disagree with it so much. Right. But, they, but, but we should make it clear it's not violent in Malaysia, though. Right, right. Okay. But I'm just saying... Uh, there's there's a clear-cut difference between the two religions. Uh, there, there's plenty of violence that is created by the very nature of the written word of the Quran mm -hmm. and the Hadith as you go through all that. Uh, I think even in the Hadith you find uh, Muhammad having some people put to death right. for one reason or another. Even assassinated. Yeah, yeah and even assassinated. So all that's uh, okay and uh, it's but it's not okay according to what we read in the scripture. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, if uh, a man strikes you on the cheek, you turn the other cheek. Mm -hmm. There's all these laws of etiquette and things of this nature. Okay, brother, with all that said, let's go to the very title, the very title of uh, our series here. Can someone who believes the Muslim religion uh, end up in hell? Can they, can, they, can they go to hell by believing the teachings of Islam? If, it, it, if they reject uh, Jesus, the, the, the atonement of Jesus Christ uh, and his blood shed for them, then there is no other way to go to heaven. Okay, so yes. the, the Bible is saying you must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He was the God-man. This is something mm -hmm. adamantly desired. He, he died on the cross and paid with his own blood to save us from our sin. This is denied by Islam. I've said many times Islam is a religion of denial. Mm -hmm. They just deny what the Bible says, even though it says the Bible says things clearly. And it was here first. So with all that said, it comes down to what Jesus said. You must believe on him. You mm -hmm. must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ if you are to be saved. But through Islam, you can't do that. You can say peace and blessings on him, but you're not believing in the real Jesus as presented by the Scripture. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure if I want the peace and blessings of a Muslim given the many blessings they've given the world, <laughs> especially Christians. I don't need. I think I need a blessing of a sword to my head. Yeah. But anyway, uh, with that, keep that in mind. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except by me. John 14:6. Now, uh, we have to sign off now. I'm Larry Wessels for Christian Answers. I'm with my colleague here, Steve Morrison of Christian Answers. He's our director of research. Uh, and join us again next time for another in this series on Islam. If you have any questions, want free information, we have our, our newsletters that are free of charge, our resource list. We have tracts and other literature on Islam, all available upon request. Just call uh, the numbers or write the address on your screen. Thank you so much for being with us. God bless you all. Islam is the gospel of unbelief. Listen now to Dr. James White in a recent debate he had with a Muslim apologist explain the problem in Islamic thought. Tremendously clear that to make the claim that they do, Islamic representatives must ignore the context of the New Testament itself, skip past the plethora of passages that teach the truth they do not believe, and most importantly, I believe, allow external authorities such as the Quran and their own beliefs to overthrow the plain testimony of scripture. Indeed, this is admitted by one Islamic writer who honestly said, quoting, speaking of the New Testament, quote, it is absolutely impossible to get at the truth, the true religion, from these gospels unless they are read and examined from an Islamic and Unitarian point of view, end quote. That's Dawood, by the way. In other words, unless you assume the falsity of Christianity, Ignore the context of the New Testament and instead insert what you seek to prove, you'll never find the true religion in the New Testament. But of course, that's circular argumentation. And that's the problem. Muslims simply do not believe Jesus, his disciples, or Christ's scripture testimony, and therefore end up believing only what they want to believe and thus deny Christ and his gospel. The consequence then is found in 2 Thessalonians, which states, And to give relief to you who are afflicted, and to us as well, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, dealing out retribution to those who do not know God, and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. And these will pay the penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Muslim friend, please do not make this eternal mistake, but believe what Jesus said and not what Muhammad said 
for Islam is a religion of unbelief and of making an idol of Muhammad a man who denied what Christ said. Check out our websites, BibleQuery.org. This site answers 7,700 Bible questions. HistoryCart.com. This site reveals early church history and doctrine proving Roman Catholicism is not historically or doctrinally viable. MuslimHope.com. This site is a classic refutation of Islam, a counterfeit religion created by Muhammad. Free newsletters are also available. 